the explanation of Imam al Nawawi's 40 hadith explanation by our Shaykh. Certainly the being of each uh, contents. A brief biography of Imam An Nawawi was born in the village of Nawa in the vicinity of Damascus in 3631 AH 1233 C. He grew up in Nawa and at the age of 19 and went to study in Damascus, which was considered the center of learning and scholarship at the time. During his stay at Damascus, Imam al Nawawi studied under more than 20 celebrated teachers, regarded as experts and authorities of their fields and disciplines. The Imam had endless thirst for knowledge, and as such, he would read 12 lessons daily and write commentaries on every lesson. He made marginal notes and explanations on each book. He read his intelligence, hard work, love, devotion, and devotion and absorption in his studies amazed his teachers such that they became fond of him and began to praise and admire him. It was reported that he, he stayed for two years without reclining on the bed, led a life of singular piety, righteousness and simplicity. After over 20 years he returned to his hometown. Soon after he returned to Nawa. He fell ill and passed away in 676 AH 1278. At the age of 45, may Allah no shower blessings on him. His works, Imam and Nawawi, may Allah shower blessings on him had a very short life during but during this short period he authored a large number of books on different subjects each of which has been recognized by the people of knowledge as a valuable treasure of knowledge among them are riyadh or salihim muslim commentary on sai muslim All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of, the, of all that exists. May his peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad and upon his household and his entire companions. And then to proceed, this book is named al Adbiyan. Its author only compiled 40 hadith because it is reported regarding the virtue of the, uh, of the one who trans transmit 40 hadith to the Ummah that the Prophet said, Whoever conveys forty hadith to my ummah from the affairs of her religion, Allah the Most High will raise him on the day of resurrection in the company of the scholars of jurisprudence and the learned. In another version it said, I will be his intercessor and witness on the day of resurrection. The scholars of hadith are agreed that this hadith is uh, weak. wanted to reward and so he selected these hadith of wanted to accomplish the great reward and so he selected these hadith and simple expressions with comprehensive entailments on the issue of issues of manners conduct and other good deeds and compile them in this book which is small in size but great in its benefit and virtue consisting of sahi authentic and Asan good ahadith. Thereafter, 
May Allah shower blessings on him. Indeed, uh, him added ten hadith, and it became fifty. He also did a commentary of the narrations in his book titled A Commentary Filled with Tremendous Knowledge Based Benefits That May Not Be Found in Other Than It. Thus it is a book what is that is truly a compilation of knowledge and greatly beneficial wisdom. Weakness, there is no room for its authentication or for those before it. However, then we, when weak narrations are combined, it, it becomes strong, especially when they, that, that does not imply establishing an obligation. I have complied, compiled its roots in a small volume, and there is not a single root that is free from the kind of weakness which necessitates that a hadith is declared weak. May Allah shower blessings on him, was a great scholar and specialist in many fields of knowledge. He was an expert in Hadith, Islamic jurisprudence, Arabic grammar, and his books found acceptance amongst the, amongst the Muslims. This is because of, and Allah knows best, his good intention and sincerity to Allah the Mighty and Sublime, and so his books have had great positive impacts. Amongst them is this book. Uh, Al Arbaun, Riyadh, and other dependable books on Shafi school of jurisprudence. So he was a noble Imam. Allah granted acceptance for his books, and the Muslims have benefited from from them, and and they still refer to them and depend on, upon them due to the abundant treasure of knowledge and marvelous virtues virtue that they contain with precision. May Allah shower blessings on the noble Imam. All praise is due to Allah, the sustainer and protector of the heavens and earth, the one who puts the entire creation in order. He sent the messengers, may Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, upon them to the legally responsible in order to guide them and explain the rulings of the religion with clear-cut evidences and plain proofs. I give thanks and praise to him for his entire blessings and ask him for more out of his favour and generosity. And I testify that there is none worthy of worship beside Allah, the one, the all-powerful, the kind, the oft-forgiving. And I testify that Muhammad is certain, certainly his servant and messenger and his friend and most beloved, the best of the creatures, who is honoured with the noble Quran, the continuous miracle over time and with lines of conduct by which those who, those who seek guidance are guided. He is the one exclusively granted the Jawawi simple expressions with comprehensive entailments and religion characterized by tolerance and mercy. May Allah's blessings and peace be upon him and upon other prophets, the followers of each of them and others amongst the pious. To proceed, it has been reported to us from Ali bin Whoever conveys forty hadith to my Ummah from the affairs of her religion, Allah the Most High will raise him on the day of resurrection in the company of the scholars of jurisprudence and the learned. In another wording, Allah will raise him as a learned scholar of jurisprudence. In the version of Abu Darda, it says, I will be his intercessor and witness on the day of resurrection, and in the version of Ibn Masood, it will be said to him, Enter the paradise from any of the gates you wish. In the wording of Ibn Umar, it says, He will be written to be in the company of the learned and be raised in the company of the martyrs. The scholars of her, uh, Hadith are agreed that it is 
A weak narration, even with when its roots are many, the scholars, may Allah shower blessings on them, have compiled numerous works on the subject, and the first person, to my knowledge, who did that was Abdullah, and then Muhammad bin Aslam, a devout scholar then, and many others amongst the earlier and later scholars. I beseech Allah the Most High for his guidance to comp compile forty ahadith, following the way of those noble and learned people and the great scholars of the religion. The scholars are agreed that weak narrations could be acted upon in matters of virtues and of deeds, yet I have not depended on his on this hadith, rather it my compiling the work it gra is grounded upon his saying in authentic narration. The one who witnesses my words, actions, and approvals amongst you should convey it to those who are absent and his saying. May Allah brighten the one who hears my words, comprehends them, and narrates them as he heard them. May Allah shower blessings on him, said, and the others amongst the students should not accept one who rightly comprehended uh, narrations. Furthermore, there are some of the scholars who compile 40 hadith on matters of the foundations of the religion and some others on the subsidiaries matters. Some based it on the matters of jihad, some upon the matters of azud, the, the use of worldly pleasures to attain nearness to Allah, and some of them on issues of manners, and others based it on ab uh, admonitions, all of which are beneficial and meritorious objectives. May Allah shower blessings on its compilers. I have found it most appropriate to compile 40, uh, 40 narrations of the mat matters of greater importance than all of that, and that is 40 narrations that include all of that, whereby each of the hadith is a great foundation from the foundations of the religion. The scholars have described each of the hadith in it uh, that Islam revolves uh, around it, or that it is, half, is a half of Islam, or a third of it or things like that. Also, I will restrict myself in this compilation of 40 narrations to authentic hadith, or only most of which are contained in the two authentic collections of al-Bukhari and Muslim. I will quote them removing their chains of narrations to enable its easy memorization and make it more generally beneficial. Allah willing, then I will follow the narrations up with a section regarding the difficult to understand words. It is important that everyone who intends the hereafter comprehends these narrations owing to the crucial matters they contain along with important words of note regarding all aspects of worship, something which is apparent to the one who ponders about them, the narrations. This hadith is reported but with similar wordings from a number of companions among them. Is this a hadith? And on Allah alone I depend and on, in him I trust and rely and all praise and favours belong to him. With him alone success is granted and protection.